guys, in case you're new to this channel, my name is Hamad Benesha. I'm the founder of undoit.ca. In this channel, I talk about MacBooks, MacBooks repairs, everything to do with MacBooks. I'm located in Toronto, Canada, downtown next to the Sin Tower. And I have been in the business for over 20 years. I'm also an Apple certified technician and I only fix MacBooks, nothing else. So if you haven't done it yet, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Well, hi guys, I'm Thibaut Jouk from Debut and Zami Francophone. Today, we're going to be working on a MacBook Pro. 13 inch 2017 this um, keyboard is uh, this uh, macbook has a problem with the keyboard uh, space bar key doesn't work okay. um, at one time there was a recall for them they all had they, a lot of them had issues with the keyboard uh, apple was fixing them for free but the recall opportunity has stopped and now she's uh, she she she's been told to replace the, um, the the top assembly which she which uh, is she gonna replace the, the battery, the, the trackpad, and the keyboard, which is expensive. So she is looking for a less expensive way to fix it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just replace the keyboard, okay? Just the keyboard alone, which is way cheaper. And I'm gonna show you how, how it's done. So um, always, first thing you wanna do, it's always, always um, unplug the, the battery. As soon as you remove the back cover, that's the first thing you, you wanna do, okay? And also remove the... Um, screw over here for the battery okay so now what you're going to do when you replace keyboards like that the first thing you want to do okay because those are rivets they are, they are screws so it's going gonna, it's gonna to need to be ripped apart you want to test the keyboard okay especially if you only only one why because once you take everything apart and then you put this back in okay and if there's an issue well it's a big big problem so, in order to avoid that, just test the keyboard before you do anything. So, I'm going to show you how you test the keyboard before you actually remove the old one. So, the easy way to do it, just remove this speaker over here. Okay, so, lucky day. They are testing the fire alarm in this building. Okay, well, thank you. Yes, you do. Okay, awesome. This has been the uh, fire alarm has been going on for a week now. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so we're going to remove this speaker over here. <clears throat> okay. I don't think I removed the screw enough, maybe. There you go. Okay, so I'm just going to put this aside. Excuse me. I have a bit of a cold. <coughs> My voice, I apologize. Okay, so now here's your keyboard cable. Okay, so we're gonna remove that one, like that. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it in here. Okay, so make sure it's all the way in. Sometimes there's double tape underneath, so it's a bit hard to put it to put it in. So take your time. I know again, like I always say in my videos, don't force anything. Something is forced, something's gonna break. Everything should fit properly without any force. Okay, I think it should be good. Maybe not. Okay, good. So now what you want to do, you want to bend this a little bit like that in order to put it in here, to plug it in here. Okay, there you go. Now, the challenge is, <coughs> excuse me again, I'm gonna put the battery and we're gonna test the keyboard. So, make sure every key work. You're gonna test each and every key. 
and if it's good then we proceed with the, the replacement unfortunately for this model it's not easy because like i said there's reverts you gotta remove the battery so it's not an easy job it's not the easiest job put it this way okay so let's try it on now we need power okay so let you hold with your thumb the bottom of the keyboard so it doesn't fall okay i'm gonna press the power button here okay let's turn it on look at the apple logo okay now for privacy i'm just gonna move away a little bit from the camera because i don't want to show the id of the, the client okay so <clears throat> i have tested the keyboard okay basically uh, uh, as you see, this is how I did it. So I plugged it in, put the, the, the battery, power it up, and then I just opened note dot, note, you know, uh, notes or word or whatever, and I, st I started to test each key, okay? Make sure they're all working, the shift included, okay? The up, the up and down, the space bar, the, the power button. So make sure every, every, every key works, the, you know, the, the backlight, the, the volume. So you go through each key. When you know it's, it's, it's all good, you turn it off, okay, shut it down. And then you're back to, to here, unplug the battery as soon as you remove it. As soon as, before you remove the, the keyboard. So you unplug the, the battery, remove the screw, and then you remove the keyboard. Okay. So this keyboard is good. Uh, good news. And um, remove the, I'm going to need this after. So I'm just going to put it inside here. Now we can go ahead and proceed and remove the, <coughs> excuse me, and remove the, the keyboard and uh, put a new one. So this is how you do it. The first thing we're gonna do, um, you need a compartment here to put all the screws. <coughs> Excuse me again, sorry about that. I had this call for a week. So I'm gonna remove the trackpad. Okay, now with the trackpad, very, very gentle, always go like this. I have so many people, they go, they go like that and they knock out the connector underneath. Okay, and then you have a real problem. See, gentle, this cannot be damaged. Okay, so you can go clockwise. It, it, it depends how you do it. I've, I've done so many now that, uh, that I, you know, there's no real order I follow. I just, I know exactly what I'm removing. So, but to, to be methodical, it's good. So unplug, you can always unplug the, the, all the cables first. So I'm just gonna remove this. Again, same thing, gently. If you have to wiggle a couple of times before it comes out, take your time. There you go. Always be gentle. Okay, this is done. Now I'm gonna remove these screws from the motherboard, for the logic board. Now I want Here. This is your first time removing this keyboard and this model it can be a bit overwhelming for so many screws and so many things to remember. But it's uh, once you do it more than once, it's, it's, it's straightforward. Especially if you take your time, don't rush. Okay. If something is is um, I don't know what they if something is uh, is not coming out or anything like that, do not force it. Okay, or when you put things back, don't force it. Take your time, go back, revisit, see why it's not fitting properly, figure out why, okay? But don't force. Forcing always end up breaking. And I've been doing that for over 23 years. And like people come here after breaking things, and which is totally, uh, can be avoided. So take your time. If you don't have time, don't do it today, do it some other time, but take your time. Okay, so the, the board should come up with no effort, just one finger like that, okay? If there's more, it's because something is still plugged in. You miss a screw or you miss a cable, okay? There you go. Okay, now put this aside. 
flat, make sure there's no water where, where you're gonna put in, no, no liquid whatsoever on the table or whatever you're gonna put in. Be careful, don't scratch any components, okay? Because sometimes people, when they, when, when they put them back, they end up scratching components over here and then they end up with a new problem. Again, I just go based on the, the things that I've seen. Again, 23 years experience, you've seen a lot of things. So they go, they go force it and then when they bring it over here, there's no backlight or something like right away. I know what to look, so you can tell this is a backlight circuit. So just be gentle, don't force anything. Okay, moving on. So now <clears throat> for this model, we're gonna have, if you wanna do it properly, okay? Uh, we're gonna have to, actually, as a matter of fact, we don't have a choice on this model, we have to remove the LCD because this bar needs to come out, okay? Then we're gonna, so we also need to remove the other speaker. So let's do that now. And then we'll move on to the, there you go. We can also remove while we are at the fan. Can the fan be gentle? You don't want to break the cable. You break the cable, you need a new fan. So take your time. Okay, here you go. Okay, now there's double tape underneath. So you can either try to be gentle or you can try to remove the screws first and then wiggle it a little bit. So let's do that. Let's remove the screws first. So I put them together so they're a bit easier to find after. Again, I've done it so many times, I know which screw goes where, but it's a good way to learn, a good way to not to have to, uh, see, uh, wonder where, 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 where go where. Okay, so now, see, it goes, if you go gently, do not break the cable, take your time. There you go, clean. Okay, now I'm just gonna remove those two screws over here for the battery. We're gonna reuse the battery, so let's not damage the battery. Two. Okay, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it where with the battery screw, and that's also for the battery. Okay, okay, so gentle. Okay, now I'm gonna go to next. Instead of removing this because I still have the LCD, I'm gonna remove the LCD, and then we'll. Um, then we'll remove the, what may call the, um, the battery last, okay? So that way we cannot damage the, the, the LCD. Okay, so let's remove the LCD. First thing you wanna remove those four screws over here. Okay, so put them together. There you go. Now I'm gonna remove those over here. Okay, now, the, the, there's four screws. The one on the on the edges are different than the one in the middle. There's like a, I don't know what you call that. It's like super thin heads. So remember that. Those ones are just regular screws, you see? So the one on the edges are the one that's super thin. Okay, now this is nice and loose. Next, we're gonna remove the antenna. You okay, can be careful with the antenna. Just make sure you, because if one of the screws get uh, damaged, then it's, it's really hard because they're already thin enough. So just take your time and use a good proper screwdriver. You don't wanna you know rip the head I and mean, then it's gonna be an issue to take it out. 
And it can always be forced because that's very, very th small. So even if you force it, it will come out. But you try to avoid, you want to try to overnight. Okay. Okay, last screw, and then we take off the antenna. Okay. There you go. When you put it back after, when you put back the antenna, you see this over here. The antenna, the... Um, <coughs> excuse me, let me show you. This part over here, see? Cannot be bent because it needs to go into the slot here. If it doesn't, then when you open and close the screen, you're gonna hear <coughs> So remember, you cannot bend this part, and this part has to go into this slot over here when you put it back. So you're gonna go like this, and then you're gonna go tick, okay? Those are uh, tip and tricks. So don't, um, in, case you, in case you put it back and it start going, what, what kind of noise is that? It's because of this, okay? Okay, so put the antenna aside. Okay, now next, what we need to do, or what I need to do, is to remove this over here, and then we're gonna take off the screen. Okay, so I'm gonna put it with this one. So we have the same anyway. Perfect, now I'm gonna open up, to make it easy for me, I'm just gonna open up the screen, like that, put it at the edge, Let's see if I can move the camera so you can see what I'm doing. There you go. And then I'm gonna remove those. Pull it like this all the way. Okay. That way it comes out. It comes out that, that, like that easily. Okay. So let's remove the screws. Let's remove two on this side. Okay, now we're gonna remove the last two. And we'll take off the LCD. Well, there you go. Okay, now be careful, put it somewhere safe. Okay, the last thing you wanna do is crack the LCD. Then you end up having to pay for an LCD. And they are not, as you know, not cheap. So, okay, now when we're gonna remove this? Okay, we need the... Um, the same screwdriver as those ones, I believe, yeah. Okay, where did I put it? Where is my screwdriver? Here, this is it. So, it's one, two. The good thing about this, as you will see when we put the new the new um, keyboard, is I'm gonna put, you're gonna put pressure on the edges here of the keyboard, of the new keyboard, because this keyboard is half of it, more than half of it actually, is rivets and you cannot put back rivets and you cannot put new screws on them. So this, the fan, the battery, all those areas are gonna help make the, the, the new keyboard stay properly, which is really good. Okay, so here you go. So now, what we're gonna do last, I'm gonna remove the battery. Okay, now, to remove the battery, you can go this side, okay? You can even remove this, but let's let's go underneath here. So what do you what do you need to remove the battery? Okay, you need a spatula. Okay, Oops, like this. You need alcohol. Okay, ninety nine point nine alcohol. Excuse me. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, now let me put the on mute. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so, yeah, so you need alcohol, <coughs> then in a point nine, okay? I'll sometimes put it on here too, okay? Dispenser like that to go underneath. You need a spatula, and um, you need to take your time, okay? You don't want to scratch the, the battery because we need to reuse this battery. So, um, 
the good thing is about the the the, the, the LCD is, is out, the board is out, so it's really if you take your time, there's nothing you can do wrong, really. So over here, there is tape underneath here. Okay, that's one. So what I'm gonna do, I can go underneath like that. Okay, if it becomes sticky, I put uh, more alcohol. Just take your time, okay? And use something really flat. You don't wanna, you don't wanna make a hole on the battery, okay? If you make a hole on the battery, you're gonna get uh, an error message to service battery or replace battery, okay? The battery's gonna be dead. So take your time, don't make a hole in the battery. Okay. And also be gentle because you don't want to damage the trackpad either, which is right underneath there. So take your time. I'll show you once you pass down, um, there is a tape over here, three. When you pass the first two, <coughs> excuse me, it becomes uh, much easier. There you can see, it gets easier and easier. But again, keep your spatula flat, and I will explain to you why exactly in one second. So keep your spatula flat, so this came out, because if you go like, if you go try to dig in like that, you're gonna end up damaging the track pan. And we don't want to do that. That would defeat the purpose. Okay. And then if you use your thumb and you push it a little bit gently, it gets easier. Okay, so here you go. See, there's one, two, three double tape. Okay. See, so I make a bit of a hole here, but I didn't go deep enough. It's only the top, so which is fine. So yeah, so one, two, three. So what I was saying, don't go like this because you don't want to damage any areas over here. If you do go deep and you damage it, then you will need a new trackpad. Okay, we don't want to do that either. So that's good. Now, the, the challenge is to replace the, the keyboard. Okay, so what we need to do, um, I'm gonna put this like this. Okay. First of all, we're gonna remove this sheet over here. Okay, and um, it's, it has no purpose really. All the purpose is to protect the keyboard, you know, from uh, touching the board, to short the board. Also, what you wanna do, you wanna one, two, three, four. There is four of those, they're not screws. I don't, I don't even know how you call them. Uh, but it's one, two, three, and four. So what you can also do, take a picture. So remember what they were. Or you can use a marker and circle the area where they were because we're gonna need to put them back after. Okay. So what I do when, I, when it's the first time I do a job, because every time they're different from one model to another, from one year to another, from, anyway, it's never the same. I take a picture, okay, for my record and I save those pictures for later on so that, that way I have to do it all the time. But in this case, so you can do that too, you see? Those are just tips that I'm showing you. Okay, so now, from time to time again, with uh, with uh, MacBooks, you're gonna come through screws that you don't have, a screwdriver, or you don't have. Okay, just to give you an idea, this is how many screwdrivers I need to fix all the different MacBooks. Okay, so let me show you. Okay, so. And for even then, from time to time, there's a new model coming out. There is, there is, you will, you you won't have the tool. Okay. So what you do, you improvise. 
as long as you do it properly there's no issues so in this case i'm going to use a plier to remove those i've done it hundreds of times so it's not a big deal just take your time so as soon as it gets loose you can use a tweezer like that and just pin it let's see There you go, and it comes out. Okay. Okay, but I'm gonna use a different uh Yeah, okay, good. I'm gonna use for the for the keyboard because the other one is almost full already. Okay, so let's do that. So that's one. I'm gonna remove remember the two some two two are small. So you can also put a note, small, small, okay? The other one is a, lo a larger. Again, if you take pictures, there should be no issues, but make sure you put back, put them back where they belong, because otherwise the board is not gonna sit properly or the fan is not gonna sit. The fan actually is, is not really, those are the screw for the fan, but the board sits on here and it's not gonna sit properly. Or maybe the speakers too. That's for the speakers actually. So make sure you put it back, otherwise, if you don't, if it's not screwed properly, the the, 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 the speakers could have, you know, um, terrible sound after it's just you know, like, because mm -hmm. it's not, um, it's moving every time there is a subwoofer or something. So if you, if you take your time and if you put back everything where it belongs, it's not a problem at all. Again, I've done it hundreds of times and there's no problem. So that's two, so we have two more to go. Okay, that's loose. And uh, that's almost loose too, there you go. We should be good. Okay, no, let's try that one, Did that work. Okay. Let's keep using the plier until it comes out completely. No biggies. And when you put the new one back, okay, just be careful there is electronics over here. You don't want to damage it, so take your time. And if you, I know I keep repeating myself, take your time, take your time, but again, I've done that so many, for so many years. And if you don't take your time, you're not including me, sometimes I'm rushed, and that's when the problem happens. If you're no rush, you're under no stress, you take your, you have all day long for do, do, do it, so be it. Okay, almost out. Almost. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Next. So next, what we need? We need. This two over right here. I'm gonna cut this over here, there's a bit of a tape here. So go through it, cut it. Okay. Well, now we can remove the sheet. Okay, this one over here. Okay, perfect. We're gonna reuse that after. So I'm just gonna put it aside. And here's your keyboard. So now, again, take your picture because you're gonna have to put screws back. There's some screws, okay? Like clean enough for us, there's some screws. It's not just rivet. And then you're gonna have to put them back exactly where they are. Okay, I missed one of the, 
large arm over here okay so in fact there's five of them not just four forget I haven't done this model in a long time okay perfect okay now the screws Okay, there's one here, there's four here, which is good. Uh, five here, actually. One, one, one on each corner. There's some over here, okay? So take a picture, and if you want, you can have a circle, so you know where they are, because we need to put them back. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and remove them. Okay, let's find the right screwdriver for that. Here it is. So, let's remove this. Okay, one more here, two here, see we must have another one here, again like I said I haven't done this model in a while, okay. which is good, there's one more here, that's perfect. They're so small too, sometimes it's hard to, to see or to remember where they are. If you do the same model all the time, it's not an issue, but like I said, at least I haven't made done in a while. Okay, so let's remove this. Okay, perfect. Let's see if there's any more screws that we need to take off. Okay, so we can go one row at a time, like this. Nope. Good. <coughs> yep. We'll get one here again. My goodness gracious. Okay. Okay, so continue. Mm, that's it. Okay, now here comes the um, the part that's difficult, the most difficult part. Okay, first of all, safety comes first. So what do we need? We need glasses. Okay, and we need gloves. Okay. Okay, anti-cat gloves. Anyway, those went out pretty good. Okay, next, this is a bit of a disclaimer for the video because this is the most dangerous part and the most difficult part is to remove the rivets. Okay, some people do it with a, with a drill, a little bit of a drill, okay, to get rid of them. Depends who, how you do it. Some people do it by pushing over here on, the, on the, each key, you know, breaking them. I like to use uh, this tool over here and I go remove one at a time like that. Okay, again, it's a disclaimer. I'm a professional. I do this for a living. I've been fixing computers 23 years. Do not use this method, Method, okay? Uh, unless you know what you're doing. 
again and I'm gonna post a video for this so you don't really uh, see 100% uh, what, what I'm doing because I don't want to be held responsible in case you cut your, your finger but uh, yeah unfortunately those shrewd needs to come out and that's the most dif difficult dangerous part of this um, repair okay so I'm just gonna pa pause the video for now and then when I'm done I I'll, uh, I'll come back okay so I finished removing the rivets okay and now what's next after that what you need to do once they're removed okay uh, you're gonna press because there's double tape between this and the, and the keyboard so you need to go gently press on each key like that for the keyboard to come out yeah it's not an easy job let's put it this way so I hope you watch the video, this video before I actually start in the job because you might want to think about it twice. Again, that's what I do for a living, so I don't have a, don't have a lot of choice if I want to make some money, <laughs> unless I replace the whole top assembly, which is too expensive. Okay, so almost done. A few more spots over here. Uh, I miss uh, a rivet, uh, that one over here, okay, so, I'm gonna remove it, there you go, okay, so, again, I'm just pushing against the keys, and it's out. Okay, now, this one came out pretty clean. Usually, um, the double tape will also come out, so then you have to pull it, peel it, okay? Make sure you do that, because if you don't do that, what will happen, one of the tape will go on the corners here, okay? The tape, which is here, will go in here, and guess what? One day, the, the person is gonna, you are, or you're the, the client is gonna, click on the key and the key is going to get stuck every time because of the double tape would be on the edges so if you see any uh, double tape coming out just peel it just remove it okay this one in this case it came out very clean so which is very uh, unusual usually I always have to end up cleaning cleaning the, removing the, the double tape okay so also make sure there is no residue or residual of the, the rivets because that will uh, also cause a problem. And finally, if this, let's see, I see here, it comes, it came out a little bit. So, I'm just gonna remove it. We don't have any problems. Again, sorry, um, I was saying if there was uh, liquid damage, let's say there was coffee or, or especially uh, anything with sugar in it, like orange juice or anything like that, what you want to do, let's see if there's some tape here, let's see it. There you go. So what you want to do, you want to clean it, clean, it, clean it before and put it back. So what you're going to do, you're going to go clean on this side Okay, you're gonna use Windex and alcohol. Okay, and then you're gonna go on, on each. Okay, you're gonna, uh, Windex and alcohol, you're gonna go on each. Okay, let's say there was orange juice on here. And then you, you, gotta, you gotta get rid of it. Otherwise, you put in your keyboard, it's gonna get sticky again. So there's no point of doing all that, just to have another issue. So I'm gonna clean up this a little bit. It's not dirty, but still, might as well. So I'm gonna use a wipe. This is a completely dry, uh, dried. I need uh, a little bit of Windex, which is gonna grab a bottle. 
and some alcohol. Windex and alcohol seems to go well together. And again, because it's, there is no electronics, okay, otherwise I will not use Windex. I'll only use alcohol, okay? Because it's just a piece of metal, so I don't really care. Drain it quickly. So, okay, nice. There's a little bit here, dirty. Try not to go too close to the tripod. Okay, now we can put the old keyboard back. And the, oh, sorry, the new keyboard back. So sometimes I'm talking and I'm thinking about something else. Um, okay, so. Sometimes you have to jiggle with it a little bit. Okay, now I should mention some of the corners. This corner over here and that corner over here had some the, um, thick heavy glue that Apple put to secure the, the keyboard at the end. So if you put your keyboard back and it doesn't fit properly, it's because of that. You're gonna need to take off the new keyboard and then you're gonna have to go through the edges over here, get rid of that uh, heavy, heavy glue. It comes out, okay? If you go like this gently, it will eventually come out. That's a residue from the old keyboard, okay? The keyboard must sit properly flat without any any curve or anything like that, otherwise you're gonna have issues, okay? So in this case, I can I can tell it's nice and clean and flat. So now what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna put screws back. So I have a picture on my screen, on my screen here. There we go, that's not the one I want. So I can look at where the screws are because I don't remember. It's been a long time I've been doing this model. So I know that it's always on four corners, which is good. Which is really, really good. So at least that secured the, the keyboard. So I start with the corners. Perfect. Okay, next I know there is this next to the space bar. So there's five there. I know that by memory. So I have to look at the, the old picture. Good, okay, now we have only, how many we have left here? Two, five, okay, so now I can look at the screen. Okay, so, let's turn this around like that, so it's exactly as what I have on my screen. The good thing is that you have this video, you can always check the video where a screws goes. Okay, and if it's a little bit like that, just loosen up a little bit. Uh, if I remember, there was a couple here. Yeah. Okay, so there's three over there for sure. So one, two. Again, like I say, if you didn't take a picture, you always have this video to refer to. So we're gonna lost EME. I had to have a picture. Luckily enough, I've learned my lessons over the years. When it's the first time I do something, I take pictures. Save them. 
in a folder with the with the model number. Okay, there is one here. And then there should be only one left. There is one over here. And I believe that's the last one actually. That is the last one. Okay, over here. Okay, perfect. So that is much screws as we can put. Now what I'm gonna do quickly, I'm gonna look around, make sure even though it's still a bit loose, make sure no no keys are sticking. They need to bounce back. Because if they are sticking it's because it's not aligned properly, and I don't wanna find out that they I wanna put everything back. Okay, good. So they all bouncing back. Next, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove this blue sheet over here. There you go, perfect. And we're gonna put back the old one. Okay. And that also will help secure it a little bit more. So make sure It's um, as flat as possible, and also make sure the holes for the screws are showing. Okay, perfect. Okay, excellent. Okay, so now, because I made some marks over here earlier, I know there is four already, and then we'll figure out where the, where the other one goes. I'm gonna look at the old pictures that I had, but for now, for sure, so it was a good idea to, to mark uh, with a marker. So I know that's small. So let's go one small one here. Oops. Okay, no such challenging to put back. It's easy to, to, to remove, but to put back is not easy. So again, going back to what I was saying earlier, take your time. I find that if I use a tweezer like that, there you go. It's really helpful otherwise. It's... And again, you don't want to scratch anything surrounding the screw. Okay, there's components here. You mess it up, and guess what? It's not the end of the world. It's just you're losing money, you gotta get another key one. So we don't want to do that, do we? Okay, good. So make sure it's nice and tight. Yeah, yeah, nice and tight, okay. Next, we're gonna do the other small one, S. I know there's a small one that goes here. Okay. The small one. Yes, it is. Okay. So this is how I do it. Put the tweezer in the middle and I hold the edge. And hopefully as soon as it starts to spin in, after that it's easy, but it has to be straight. I'm sure there's tools obviously to do that. It's just because I don't do it often. And there's a work, work around it. I never really bother looking for it. And again, the next model coming out is gonna be something else anyway. So it's always new screws and new things up. Okay, so I think it should be good enough. Let's try it. Okay. It's going. I'm taking my time. As I said, there's electronics beside it. Okay. I'm 
little bit more. Make sure it's nice and tight. That way we'll secure the keyboard. Okay, good. Nice. Okay. Now we have one small one again. Okay, and I didn't mark. So let me look at my picture right here. Let me if I can figure out where it goes. Okay, where did it go? Okay, let me this one, close that one. Okay, it goes here. Okay. And then after that you'll see when we start reassembling. Reassembling it's easy. It's not like taking I find anyway myself. My experience of like reassembling I find things faster. So same thing, we're gonna tie it up. Okay, let me check my emails here. I'm working with client to clients, doing everything at the same time. Okay, cool. That's another computer store. In a couple of my books. Well, because I specialize in MacBooks only, often computer stores will do a lot of things, which is totally understandable. They need help because it's not really the expertise. It's fixing boards. So the smart one, they don't try to attempt it themselves, they, were, they outsource it. Okay, so. Beautiful, now I know there's two large here, which will be helpful too. And then we only have two left. I gotta check the pictures again. Figure out where you go. Okay, the large one, a bit easier. Okay, see how fast that one? And it's almost tight too. So look at that one, done. Well, let's I would say easy, yeah, perfect. Uh, the second one goes here. Next time I just circle all of them. Even even though I have a picture, make it easy for me. I don't have to look for that picture. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, nice and tight. Two more, I would think maybe one of those two. One of those two, okay, let's see. Let's take a look at this picture. Let's take a look at this two. One over here, yeah, okay. Okay, one goes here. So easy. Where does anybody go in? Where am I going wrong? Let's see. Some dust in there, dirt in there? No. Okay, let's pay attention to what I'm doing. Okay, here we go. Going in. Voila. 
By the way, I speak French. Je parle français, donc si vous êtes francophone, il n'y a pas de problème. Je parle arabe. Ok, perfect. Ok, now, last one. Where does it go? Where does it go? What does it say the picture there? Done. Next, we're gonna put this bar over here, and then we'll put the, the fan, <coughs> and that should secure, completely secure the, um, what is it called, the keyboard. And then we're gonna put this over here too, and we're good to go. All I gotta do is just put the board back, put the LCD back. And Bob is your uncle, like this here in Canada. Okay, perfect. Okay, now let's put this bar back. I find that very satisfying, I don't know why, but... There you go. Okay, now we're done with this one. Careful. Okay, let's get that screen. Okay, okay. Perfect. Nice screw right here. Now I'm gonna put some tape over here. And then we're gonna put this back. So double tape. There you go. Some strong double tape. Voila. I'm gonna put a little bit more here. Move. Put more the battery after. Okay. So now we can put this. Oops. Yes. Sorry. Voila. Beautiful. Now I'm gonna put just. Couple here. The battery is not going to move in again because it's secure with the screws. But just you know to avoid any vibration, I'm not going to secure it yet. I'm not going to do the tape yet until I test everything. And now it's good. Then I'll um, I will uh, secure it. Okay, so now, what do we need to need next? The fan. Let's put the fan in. Let's put the fan in. Okay. Voila. So, we got four screws for the fan. See, when you organize all this, it makes it faster and easier. Because here's the thing. 
Some people, they use the wrong screws on the wrong spots. And sometimes the screw is too long. I've seen it many times. That what will happen is that the screw will go through and it will actually make a hole in the keyboard. Yes, in the keyboard. So then the keyboard is no longer working or one of the keys is not working. I've seen it many times. So if you put the screws, the proper screws where they belong, there will be no problem. So I'm just putting the, the fan connector, the, you know, to the, to the connector. Then I'm gonna put the screws. It's a bit easier. Okay, so let's secure again the fan properly. Good, number three, four. Okay, good. Okay, now what we can do, we can double check again the keyboard, make sure it's all good. Okay, so I can go like this now. I know it's not gonna budge, it's not gonna move, yes. So the keys are good, yeah, yeah, yes. Perfect. Okay, now we can continue. Next will be to put the LCD. Oh, yeah, the LCD. And then we put the board and we're done. Okay, the LCD. I put it somewhere secure. There it is. Okay, so the LCD. Make sure you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, good. So, what you want to do, pull this, okay, to the back like that. Then you put in the screws like that. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put two screws. We're going to close the lid and we're going to align it. Okay, so I'm just, I'm not going to tighten them up too much. We just need to align the LCD with the with the with the bottom with the top case. Make sure you close properly. So, two screws, tighten them up, but not too much. Then you want to close the lid. Make sure there is nothing in between. Make sure there is nothing in between. We don't want to crack the screen. Okay. Then with your fingers over here, you run on the edges like that, with your feet in, make sure it's all nice and aligned. If it is, then you can secure it properly. There you go. Okay, and you can put the other two screws on this side. There you go. Okay, one more. Now next, what we're gonna do, we're gonna put those ones over here. Okay, so I put them together, four of them, here they are. You want to do that when the LCD, it, when the when the lid is closed. That way, it, you have a lot of room to work. Otherwise, if it's the LCD is, is open, this one stretches, and it's not easy to put in. Okay, one, two.
and on this side. Okay, on this side. Okay, perfect. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the antenna back. And the antenna back, yeah. There we go. Okay, now remember about the slot over here, it needs to go in. Listen, hopefully you can hear it. There you go. Sometimes it goes tick, sometimes it doesn't, so if you don't hear it, it doesn't mean anything, but the battery, the antenna should be nice and you shouldn't have to push against it. And over here, okay, over here, that's where you know if it's in or not. Why? Because if it's not, this part, the black part is gonna be pushed back. It has to be parallel with the edge of the LCD here, okay? That's it, if you do that, no problem. Okay, and, what I'm gonna do now is just put a couple of screws over here to secure the antenna. Oops. Okay, I got all the screws here. Okay, I'm gonna put one more on this edge. Remove. Voilà. Okay, I'm gonna put one more here. Okay, then when I finish putting this, I'm gonna secure this. Remember there's four screws. Okay, when this is finished, I'm gonna put back the board, going like that. Okay, then I'm gonna put back the other two speakers. Okay. And that's it, job is, job is done. So the job was to show you how to replace the, 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 the keyboard. The reassembling is very easy. Um, again, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's important to give me a thumbs up if you did, because that's the only way the video is gonna be shown on YouTube. Uh, there's so many uh, other videos there. If you're in Canada, support the Canadian businesses. And um, I hope uh, you subscribe to the channel and I hope uh, to see you in the next video. Uh, I look forward to it. Thank you for watching. The process is very easy whether you're looking in Toronto or anywhere in Canada, just visit andoit.ca. Click here to get a quote, or you can also click on the menu here, get a free quote, it's the same link. There is nine different categories, so try to select the one that best applies to you. In this example, I'm just going to click on my screen is black. And uh, let's assume my screen goes black when I tilt it. So I can, you can either get a free quote online or you can also call if you prefer. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to click on get a free quote. Fill up the form and just click on submit form. When you click on submit form, this is what I receive on my hand. And as you can see, we do receive a lot of requests. Uh, actually, 90% of our business is uh, shipped to us now from all over Canada. So you can rest assured that we know what we're doing. Uh, so I read it, I analyze it, and then I send an email with a quote uh, with all the option to the client. And if you decide to ship it, you just click uh, here to select your shipping option, and then you'll receive a shipping label. As soon as your MacBook is fixed, you will receive an email with pictures showing your MacBook repaired, your invoice, and how to proceed with the payment by credit card. As soon as the payment is made, we'll send it back to you. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to receiving your MacBook. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know, share it, and don't forget to subscribe. See you in my next video.